So one of my favorite features of Excel is also one of my worst enemies. It's a feature that all Excel users can benefit from, but unfortunately, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble over the years. It's cost me hours of extra work, leading to frustration and confusion with my bosses and coworkers. And the feature I'm referring to is Excel tables. Now, if you're familiar with Excel tables, you know of their many benefits. They can take data that looks like this and turn it into a nicely formatted table with banded rows, filters are automatically turned on, and they also automatically expand when we add new rows or columns. So what's not to love here? Well, in reality, tables aren't that popular. Actually, not that many users use tables. And I believe it's for one main reason, which is that they require you to learn a new formula language. So for example, if we were to write just a simple average formula on this regular range here, start typing average, we'll tab into that and just select this range, you can see that we get this reference here, G4 to G18. Of course, that's a regular range reference that we're all familiar with. Now, if we write that same formula against data that's in a table, when we select this column here, you can see we get this new referencing, table one amount. This is the table name and the column name, which is called structured referencing. And this brings a whole new world for Excel users that can cause a lot of confusion. And you might be thinking that this formula language looks pretty easy, but in reality, when you get into it, it's not. The structured reference formula language has several new characters that a lot of Excel users just aren't familiar with. There's also a difference in absolute references where we typically use dollar symbols, and instead with structured references, we duplicate the column name twice, which is kind of weird. Copy and paste has a different behavior than dragging with the fill handle, and users struggle with locating the sheet that the table is on when it's referenced in a formula on a different sheet. And unfortunately, structured references are like a foreign language. Again, a regular A1 style reference can look something like this to reference this range, and a structured reference can look as complicated as this to reference the same range. So for novice users that don't use Excel all day every day, this can be very challenging. It kind of reminds me of the TV show, The Amazing Race. In that show, contestants are dropped into a foreign city and they have to navigate their way around to complete challenges. Oftentimes they have to ask other citizens for help, but they don't speak the local language. And this leads to frustration and a lot of wasted time. Now, of course, this makes for great entertainment on TV, but when you're trying to get work done in your Excel file so you can pick your kids up on time, this is not as much fun. So I'm gonna share some real world examples of how this has gotten me in trouble, and I'll also share some workarounds and solutions to keep you help keep you out of trouble with Excel tables. So I wanna share one example of where tables have gotten me in trouble, and this is when I worked in the FP&A department for a company several years ago, and we were in charge of the annual budgeting process. And of course, with any process like that, the whole goal is to create and populate the budget templates for all the departments worldwide. And there was multiple sheets in this template with tables in them. And we had 928 departments worldwide, which means 928 Excel files, and about 800 people involved in this process. Some of the managers managed uh, multiple departments. And so when I kind of thought about and broke down the skill level of all of these people involved, it kind of looked like this. We had a handful of advanced users, several intermediate users, and then the rest were either beginners or we didn't know the skill level. And that's of course because they're department managers. They're not necessarily using Excel very often or all day. And so we wouldn't actually expect them to know and understand structured references because to me, structured references and Excel tables are more of an intermediate to advanced skill because of this new formula language. We also wouldn't want to ask the managers to learn structured references because like with any language, if you don't use it, you lose it. If you've ever heard that saying, definitely true with structured references. So we wouldn't want them to spend time or waste time learning this. And so therefore we were getting a lot of phone calls and emails saying, hey, your file's broken or I don't understand these formulas or I'm just trying to sum or average a column and I can't make it make sense with these formulas. Now, one thing that I thought could save me in this situation was a setting. If we go into file options, and go to formulas, there is a setting here to use table names in formulas. And we can turn this off. It's on by default. But if we turn that off, and we go back over to this table, as you can see, we still have this uh, formula with structured references. But if we were to write that again, we'll just do that up here. And we now select this column, you can see that it does not turn into structured references. It remains a regular A1 style reference. Now there's a few really important things to understand with this setting. 
First of all, it does not change any existing references in the file. So as you can see here, we created this reference when structured reference formulas were turned on and that setting was on and it's going to remain like this. That setting does not change any existing formulas. The other challenge is that this setting is what's called an application level setting. And this becomes a challenge when you're sharing your files with other users. So in this scenario here, let's say we are the author and we turn that setting off so we're seeing regular range references. If we share our workbook with user one and they have the setting on because it's on by default, they will still see the structured references. When we turn the setting off in our workbook and share that with someone else, it does not turn that setting off in their workbook. The setting does not travel with the workbook. It's an application level setting, which means it stays with the user or it's set on the user's computer and that's the way it stays. So what happens here is that we can have users of the file with different settings and this creates what I call bilingual workbooks because you're gonna have all different types of references within the same file and it can cause a lot of confusion. Now I wanna be clear here, I'm not saying don't use tables. I love tables, but I just don't always recommend them. It really depends on the scenario. So here's some tips to help you decide on when to use tables. You can use tables when you know your users. You know if they're familiar with tables or if you think it's a good opportunity to teach them about tables, then I highly encourage you to use tables. But you'll wanna avoid tables if you're sending files to vendors or customers and you're not really sure who you're sharing the file with or who they might share the file with, then I would say avoid tables. Or if you have a larger user base like I did in the previous example with varying Excel skills, I would also say in those scenarios, unfortunately, it's best to avoid tables. Now, I've thought of a lot of possible solutions where Microsoft would have to make changes to Excel in order to improve the experience with table formulas. But ultimately what we wanna do here is just remove this scenario where we have these bilingual workbooks. And it'd also be nice if users could author or edit the formulas in their preferred style. I, li I actually like structured references because I've spent a lot of years learning them and I know and understand how they work and all of the little nuances around them. Uh, however, for new users, we'd want them to be able to just use the regular range references that they're accustomed to using with tables and those could still be translated into structured references for other users. So some way to just accommodate everyone would be great because tables have been around since Excel 2007 and I'd love to see them gain popularity. They're an integral part of the data analysis process with things like Power Query and the source of pivot tables and it would be great if more users could use them. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment below and let us know your experience with tables and what changes you'd like to see with them so they would become more popular. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and then check out this video next if you wanna learn more about data analysis in Excel. Thanks again for watching, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.